Good morning and praise the Lord, everybody. To God be the glory, to God be the honor, to God be all the praise. What a great and a mighty God we serve. We delight in him. Are you delighting in the Lord? Are you holding on to your faith? Have you positioned yourself for miracles, signs, and wonders? Do you believe God for the impossible? I want you to hold on to your faith this morning as we continue in our series regarding a faith-filled life. I blessed the Lord last week or a few weeks ago uh, before we went into Resurrection Sunday, we began to talk about jump-starting your faith. We're going to continue this morning as we learn how to use our shield of faith and the importance of that shield. We're still going to be looking at the book of Nehemiah, find out what the enemy's tactics are. You see, God says we're not ignorant of his devices, and I don't want you to be ignorant this morning. So we are going to share some of the devices of the enemy. We're not glorifying him. I just want you to be aware as to how he operates so that you will understand that you have victory. I told you why he operates as he does, and now we're going to talk about how he operates. So we give God glory. Let us receive this morning Elder Sam Barber as he comes with our prayer and our worship on this morning. And then shortly thereafter, I want you to enter in now because after that, I'm going to come back and we're going to praise our God like never before. I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be equipped. I want you to be strengthened today. Come on. This is, watch this. We're walking with Jesus and we walk by what? Faith and not by sight. I give you into the hands of Elder Sam as he comes. God bless you, Elder. God bless you, Apostle. Good morning on this good, good morning. Sunday morning. I don't know if Amen. it is it nice. Yes, my volume. Okay. That's better now. I can hear you. Hallelujah. Can you hear yes. me now? God bless you. Yes. Hallelujah. We praise God on this morning. We're excited for what God's going to do on the line on today. Hallelujah. So we're going to read the entire chapter of number of Psalm 34. Amen. Starting with the first verse, you get your Bibles and amen. We're going to be able to get into the word on today. Amen. And increase our faith. Glory to God. Psalm 34 verse 1 starts says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant. Their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger. But those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears and the de delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and save such as a, have a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He guards all his bones. Not one of them is broken. 
evil shall slay the wicked and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. Hallelujah. God, we thank you this morning. Hallelujah. For hearing our cry on this morning. Hallelujah. Many have come on the line this morning to cry out unto you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We cry out Hallelujah to the Lord Most High. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah to our God, who is the God of all gods. Hallelujah, who is strong and mighty, who is mighty in battle. Hallelujah. So we glorify you this morning, God. We lift you up this morning. We exalt you. We extol you. We give you praise and honor and glory. Let's do your name on this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you for another Sunday morning. God, where we can come before your throne boldly, hallelujah, and recognize recognize you as the author and finisher of our faith on this morning. Hallelujah. So we thank you, God. Hallelujah for being the, the author of our faith and helping us to increase and expand our faith on this morning. For you said without faith, it's impossible to please God. Hallelujah. So we must have, hallelujah, mustard seed faith, God. Oh God, we thank you, Lord God, for the measure of faith that you've given us already on this morning. So God, we we pray that you open up our ears, open up our eyes. Oh God, open up our spirits to understand and to hear and receive all that you have for us on this morning. We bless you, oh God. We understand, God, that we've already got the ear of the learned and the tongue of the learned, oh God. So as you speak, oh God, hallelujah, that it will not be by power nor by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. We shall hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church in this hour hour. God, we thank you for freedom in the Holy Ghost, Lord God, on this morning. We thank you, oh God, for where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, God. Hallelujah. We thank you for victory on this morning. Apostle has already proclaimed victory on this morning. God, and we receive victory on today, God, as your word comes forth, as everyone joins in on the line, oh God, let victory be their portion on this morning, God. We thank you, oh God, for every prayer request on this morning, spoken and unspoken, God, in the name of Jesus. We ask, God, that your healing, that your deliverance, that your salvation power be released on the line on this morning. Hallelujah. All the way from uh, uh, the edges of San Joaquin County all the way across this nation, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Your people are crying out for help, God. Your people are crying out for healing. Your people are crying out for hope, God. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, your people are crying out for blessing. Ah, oh, God, your people are crying out for breakthrough, for turnaround in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So we ask that you reign on our fields on today by faith faith. We speak it so in the name of Jesus. God, we cover your servant on this morning as she comes to release the word of God. Hallelujah. We pray that it falls on good ground in the name of Jesus, on good soil, and that it will spring up a well of new, of a new anointing, of a fresh anointing, of a fresh power, of a fresh strength from God on this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you, oh God, that you have cleared the lines. There shall be no interruptions or distractions in the name and power and authority of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let your word come forth in the name of Jesus. We give you glory and we honor you. We bless you in God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. We extol you on this morning. We bless you, God. Hallelujah. We lift you high on this morning. You know, when they were lifting the Lord Jesus, this and putting him on the cross. They didn't really know what they were doing. Amen. But he said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, that I will draw all men unto me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you can join in with the worship on this morning as we lift him. Glory to your name, God. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice, oh yes, to worship you, oh my soul. 
rejoice take joy my king in what you hear and let it be a sweet sweet sound in your ear oh i love you lord and i live my voice oh yes i do to worship you oh my soul rejoice take joy my king in what you and let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. For thou, O oh Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above all God. For thou, O Lord, art high above all the earth, the earth. Thou art exalted far above all God. So everybody sing we so the yes, God, we so the we exalt thee, oh Lord, we exalt thee, Lord, we Exalting, 
Yes, we exalt thee, O oh God. Oh, Lord, we exalt thee. Hallelujah to your name, O oh God. We exalt thee. Oh, yes, we do, God. We exalt thee. Oh, Lord, oh, 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 Lord, oh, oh, Lord, we give you glory, God, oh, oh, Lord, oh, yes, we do, oh, oh, Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many know he was bruised? Hallelujah. For our iniquities. Hallelujah. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hear the word of the Lord this morning saying unto you, people of God, it's already done. Hallelujah. It's already done in the spirit. It's already done, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Rejoice in your victory. Rejoice. Hallelujah. In your new faith on today. Praise the Lord, our God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we bless you. We bless you. We extol you. There's none like you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless you, Elder Sam. Praise the Lord this morning. Come on. Rejoice in your new faith this morning. Rejoice in your revived faith this morning. Rejoice in your place of faith this morning. Come on. You are never going to make it in this life unless you stand boldly in faith. Hallelujah. Come on and give God glory for the faith of God this morning. Come on, we walk by his faith. We walk by his faith. We stand on faith, the faith in God this morning. Hallelujah. I'm going to go over just a couple of scriptures. I just want to bring you up to date. If you have not been on, if you have not heard the word of the Lord as we have been ministering uh, over the past few weeks. Last week was Resurrection Sunday, so we didn't do last week, uh, and we did not do it. We had our prophetic release the Sunday prior, so you're going to need to go back two, three weeks and to get caught up so you could hear the word of the Lord. This will certainly increase your faith. It has blessed me as God has released this word unto me. I want to start at Hebrews chapter 11 and just to briefly recap as we go into the word today. And I want you to know God is faithful. He is faithful to do what he said he'd do. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number one, it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now, I told you a few weeks ago that your end is greater, your end is bigger, your end is more influential, and your end is more powerful than anything you can imagine. And I want you to hold on to that. That's what the Spirit of the Lord told me to tell you. This is about the end game. Your end is greater. Your end is bigger. Your end is more influential and more powerful. And that's why the enemy tries to stop you. So the word of God says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. What I have allowed you to understand is that faith as a substance makes real, it makes it real that which we are hoping for. In, a, in a, uh, other words, uh, faith produces. Uh, faith will produce. It's an evidence that produces and is going to produce your expected end. Uh, I told you that faith gives uh, life to that which you are hoping for. I don't know what you're hoping for this morning, but faith is bringing life to that which you are hoping for and feet to that which you believe. Oh, give God praise. Come on, it's going, listen, what you're believing God for is beginning to take feet, meaning it's getting ready to move into motion. For some of you, it's already happening. 
Faith is a conviction of the truth. It produces the expected end. And faith, watch this now, is a power at work. Come on, say that. Faith is a power. Faith all by itself is a power at work. And so we understand that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. And so we've spoken about in the book of Nehemiah, and I ask that you read, you read the whole book, but in the book of Nehemiah, we went over chapter two, and then there's some things I want to share with you out of chapter number four. Uh, in the book of Nehemiah, chapter two, we understood that there were some challenges that Nehemiah came up against. We understood that he came up against an enemy called Sanballat, which means briar bush. We understand that Sanballat did not stand by himself because he was, he listen, he couldn't stand by himself. He always went and gathered the others. Uh, he stood with Jeshem um, and, and he stood with Tobiah. He stood with others. Tobiah was just a little tag along. But we understand this, uh, that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord is going to lift up a standard. So I want to talk to you this morning Hallelujah. As we look at our faith in action, and, and I want to talk to you about some of the hindrances uh, to your faith. Uh, we understand that the enemy will try to do what he does, and that's what he does. So we don't glorify him. And the word of God tells us we are not ignorant of his devices. Uh, so I want to make sure that you understand what his devices look like. So in Nehemiah chapter four, the word of the Lord says, but it so happened when Sambalot heard that we were rebuilding the wall. Now, every time Sambalot heard or got a, an unction or, or got him caught wind of the fact that Nehemiah could not be stopped. You see, they understood Nehemiah, no matter what happened, could not be stopped. When he heard that he was rebuilding the wall, that he was furious and very indignant. And he mocked the Jews. This is why the mocking is going on. Uh, I was sharing with some young people regarding uh, how bullying takes place and what bullying looks like. Uh, what Sanballat did here and all the others along with him, they began to bully uh, with their words. Watch this, because death and life are in the power of the tongue. So they began to bully the Jews. And he spoke before his brethren and the army of Samaria. And he said, watch this now, watch the bullying. Watch the words that Sanballat began to speak. Words, words, words. We used to say sticks and stones can break my bones, but words, names will never harm me. But I want you to listen for just a moment because I want you to understand how words and names have crept into your life and your ear, the ear of the learned. Watch this. Hallelujah. What are these feeble Jews doing? Uh, listen how they mock them. Uh, will they offer sacrifices? Uh, will they complete it in a day? Uh, will they revive the stones from the heaps of rubbish? Uh, stones that are burned? Uh, they began to talk them uh, and talk about them. Uh, they call them weak and feeble. Uh, I don't know who I'm speaking to today, uh, but somebody has called you weak and feeble. Uh, some of you have even labeled your own selves uh, as those that will never carry out uh, the assignment that you've been given. Uh, you start one thing and you stop, and you start and you start, start and you stop. Uh, and then you have purposed uh, that I'm going to stay the course. And then the words of the enemy come back. Uh, you're never going to finish that uh, which you have started. Uh, but today you have to declare, yes, I will. Uh, watch this. Now, Tobiah, the Ammonite, was beside him. I talked to you about that last time. And he said, now watch, uh, 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 Sanballat starts uh, by really taunting them uh, and letting them know that they're feeble and telling them what they can't do and what they'll never accomplish. 
I know I'm talking to somebody today, somebody that has settled because your knee hurts. Uh, you'll never accomplish anything uh, because you don't have the best of eyesight. Uh, you'll never be able to do it. Uh, you didn't finish high school. Uh, you just slid through high school. Uh, you don't have a college education. Uh, and all because of that, uh, you'll never make it. You'll never be productive. You'll never live. Uh, but today, I said it before, you've got to say the devil is a liar every word that has been spoken against you in judgment uh, you must condemn uh, so sanbala said what he has to say and then to buy the little tag along i just call him a tag along uh, you always got people that that are not initiators uh, but they are tag alongs uh -huh. so to buy the tag along uh, to buy was beside him uh, and he said, this is verse number three, whatever they build, come on, I need you to hear this, people of God. If a fox goes up on it, uh, he will break down their stone wall. Uh, so now Tobiah is shooting words that even if you try to build it, it won't be worth anything. Uh, it's going to crumble. It's going to stumble. Uh, it's going to fall. Uh, oh, come on. The enemy is speaking to some of you today. Uh, ah, we got to get through this. Uh, and then watch this now. In the process of it, uh, Nehemiah hears uh, the words of the enemy. Uh, he says, hear, O oh God, for we are despised. Turn their reproach uh, on their own heads uh, and give them as plunder to a land of captivity. You see, you've got to know how to handle the words of the enemy. You've got to know how to handle, listen, I don't care who he's using. Uh, if he's using your manager, you've got to know how to use the word of God against the word of the enemy. Oh, Nehemiah said, look, God, listen to what they're saying. All I'm trying to do is your will and your work. I want to do it your way. And the enemy is taunting me. Every word that he speaks, I cast it down. Let every dart that he throws boomerang and get him back. Every ditch that he digs, come on somebody, let him fall into it himself. In the name of Jesus, uh, you've got to know how to war when you are in a battle. Uh, you've got to know how to war to win. Uh, watch this. Uh, he says, don't cover their iniquity and don't let their sin be blotted out uh, from before you. For they have provoked you to anger God uh, before the builders. Uh, can I speak to builders on this morning? Uh, you've been assigned to build. Uh, I told you on Wednesday night uh, that even the gift of prophecy uh, is a gift to build. Uh, you've been assigned to build others. Uh, and every time you've been assigned to build, uh, fivefold ministries assigned to build. Uh, every time you're assigned to build, uh, the enemy tries to come in and creep in. Uh, and God says, or uh, the word of God says, uh, Nehemiah tells the Lord, listen, uh, this is not my doing. Uh, these people are talking against you. Uh, don't you love it when you're doing what God said do? Uh, people began to speak against your work. Uh, turn it back to God. God, uh, this is not even about me. Uh, this is about you. Uh, all I'm doing is everything my hand uh, have been assigned to do. Now, God, look at what they're doing to you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, watch this. This is what I want to get to. Uh, so we built the wall and the entire wall was joined together up to half its height for the people had a mind to work. That's all good. They started out with a mind to work, but watch this. Now it happened when Sanballat, Tobiah, the Arabs and the Ammonites and the Ashadites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were being restored and the gaps were beginning to be closed that they became very angry. Every time you progress, Every time you have movement, uh, every time you are successful, uh, every time you are climbing uh, in the things of God, uh, you've got to know that the enemy is angry. Uh, we used to say when we were children, ain't nobody mad but the devil. Uh, whatever has come to stop you, uh, you've got to understand that nobody's mad but the devil. Uh, if your friends are mad, your family's mad, your co-laborers in crisis mad, 
Just maybe the devil is using them. Uh, don't get mad at them because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Uh, but you need to address that spirit uh, that's in operation in them. Uh, oh, hallelujah. They got angry. Uh, they became very angry. And all of them conspired together to come and attack Jerusalem and create confusion. Uh, watch this. There is a conspiracy uh, that's been released against you. Uh, and this conspiracy, I told you, you're not ignorant of Satan's devices. Uh, some of you are saying, I don't understand why I'm so confused. Uh, I don't understand why I can't get it together. I don't understand why I can't think right. There's been a conspiracy that's been loosed against you uh, to cause confusion. Uh, that's why you can't think, right? Uh, I know some of you are saying, uh, oh, it's all because uh, you're going through the change. Uh, all because you're at a different season in your life. Uh, all because you got so much going on. But I beg to differ this morning. Uh, I want you to know there's been a conspiracy of confusion that's been loosed against you. And so this morning, I break uh, the assignment of confusion oh, over your life in the name of Jesus. Uh, I cast down every high thing uh, that has exalted itself uh, against the knowledge of God. Uh, confusion bowed down uh, at the name of Jesus. Uh, loose the minds of the sons uh, and the daughters of God uh, and let them go. Hallelujah. I speak a sound mind. No, you're not confused, baby. You're not confused. You need to understand what confusion comes from. If God is not the God of confusion, guess who is? And the enemy has conspired against you. Oh, he's mad at you. And he should be because you are a bad somebody. You got, and you've got to know this. Oh, Jesus, the problem is uh, you don't know it. Uh, you don't get it. Uh, everything that God has said about you, uh, you take it lightly. But the minute the enemy opens his mouth, uh, you're crying, oh, woe is me. Uh, not this day uh, and not anymore. Hallelujah. They conspire together. Nevertheless, Nehemiah said, we made our prayer to God. Come on, this is good. We made our prayer to God. And because of them, we said, watch against them day and night. See, you got to understand the enemy's real. Your adversary is real. And you need to watch and pray. Hallelujah. Watch and pray. Your adversary is real. That's why Jesus says, listen, can you not just watch with me but one hour? Can I get you to hang in there just one hour? Can you pray with me one hour? Hallelujah. You've got to watch. You've got to watch. Watch this. I, I, you gotta, I've got to get to this. This is so good. This blesses my soul. So we said, watch against him. Nehemiah was also, I told you about the great things. He was a warrior. He was a fighter, but he was also a tremendous strategist. Uh, uh, not only was he a strategist, I believe, as my book talks about, uh, the gift of administration, uh, I believe he had an administrative anointing, uh, which meant, which meant uh, he knew how to handle things in adversity. He knew when to do, how to do, why to do, where to do it. Uh, all because of the gift of administration uh, that was upon his life. Uh, he knew that there are times uh, that you got to have another strategy. Uh. Now listen, Nehemiah was not moved uh, by the words of the enemy, uh, but watch what happened to the people. Then Judah said, come on Judah, Judah is the praises. Uh, Judah's the worshipers. Uh, Judah's were the one that went before everybody else. Uh, he said, Judah said, the strength uh, of the laborers is failing. Uh, and there's so much rubbish that we are not able to build the wall. Uh, now watch this, people of God. In verse number six, uh, Nehemiah said they had a mind uh, to build. Uh, they had a mind uh, to build. Uh, but after all of the taunting uh, of the enemy, after after all of the lies of the enemy, after all the deception of the enemy, after all the intimidation of the enemy, after all manipulation of the enemy, now Judah saying we're getting weak. I don't know that we're able to do it. Listen, listen, listen. What have you put your hands to? Do not turn back today because of the lies of the enemy. 
They began to say in verse number 11, and our adversary said, they will neither know nor see anything till we come unto their midst and kill them and cause their work to cease. The enemy's trying to take you out and cause your work to cease. Why? Because you're doing a good work. Why? Because you purpose you wouldn't come down. Why? Because you have seen the end game. Why? Because God has already told you that he's got the plan for your end. He's already established you, but the enemy keeps taunting you and keeps lying to you. Don't buy into his lies. Verse 12, so it was when the Jews who dwelt near them came that they told us 10 times from what place you turn, they will be upon us. Listen, uh, they, they sound like uh, the servant of Elisha, where who saw the enemy, um, who saw their territory surrounded uh, by the enemy. Oh, master, what are we going to do? Uh, for we have been surrounded by a great wall of enemy. Uh, I want you to see today uh, that your eyes are being opened, uh, that you will see in the spirit realm. Uh, as you are seeing in the natural, uh, your eyes are being opened. You might see the enemy against you in the natural, uh, but in the spirit realm, uh, greater are they that are with you than they that are against you. Uh, you got to get a hold to that this morning. Uh, he says, so Nehemiah is being the strategist because the people's heart began to fear. Why did they fear? Because they let the words of the enemy get into their minds. Don't let his words get into your mind. If he gets into your mind, he will control you. Hear me, people of God. Uh, this is why, come on, uh, you can't deal with psychics uh, and, and you can't deal with those who want to hypnotize you. Uh, that's not for the sons and daughters of God. Uh, why is that? Because you allow somebody uh, into your mind. Uh, you got to be careful uh, who you allow into your mind. Uh, do not allow people uh, to come into your mind, uh, to come into your thoughts. Uh, do not allow uh, the lies of the enemy uh, to take control in your life. Because when you do, you become, as they say, you, you, you take on who they say you are. Come on, this is not time to take on who they say you are. Who does God say you are? What does God say you can do? We've got to listen to the right voices. We've got to listen to the right people of God. We've got to listen to the spirit of the Lord. And we've got to cast out and shut out every voice that is not of God. They let them, the children of Israel, let the enemy get into their minds and into their thoughts. Don't let the devil get into your thoughts, people of God, because it is a matter of control. If you can control a man's thinking, you can control his action. Uh, look, they started out saying, uh, we have a mind to work. We can do this. Uh, oh, we got this pastor. Oh, we got this evangelist. Uh, oh, we got this prayer leader. Oh, we got this teacher. And then you hear the words of Satan. Uh, and all of a sudden, you just threw uh, a whole shoe in the situation. Uh, and everybody's wondering, why did she change her mind? Uh, why did he start out so well? Uh, and now all of a sudden, he's backslidden. Uh, why did he start out? Uh, and he was prowling forth uh, with all the power and the might uh, and the mind of God. Uh, and then he started slipping back. Uh, what happened? The enemy got into your mind. Oh, yeah. They get into your mind. They lie. Oh, yeah. They say all kind of bad stuff uh, about you. Uh, bad stuff about the ministry. Uh, bad stuff about the people in the ministry. Uh, bad stuff about your family. And I tell you something this morning. As I was praying, 
the Lord shared something with me that is so powerful. Now, I want you to really get this uh, because you've got to be careful uh, that you don't agree with everything you hear. If it's not coming from God, don't agree with it. If you allow the enemy in your mind, uh, you begin to agree uh, with what he says. Uh, but this morning, we must agree uh, with what our God is saying. Uh, this is what he began to share with me this morning. Um, as I was in prayer, this is so powerful. Um, I understand sometimes uh, as a wife, uh, and we have to get it as a mother, and we have to get it as a minister, as a leader. We have to understand sometimes uh, that things don't always go uh, the way we want them to go. Uh, we have to understand sometimes uh, that those of us that have investments, uh, we've got to understand that life is life uh, and it's going to happen. Watch this. This is what I want you to hear. This is so powerful. Uh, and even you mothers that are out there, uh, I don't care if your sons or daughters are on drugs. Uh, I don't care if they are promiscuous. Uh, I don't care what's happening in their lives. Watch this. Uh, come on. I, you got to get this. You really got to get this. Uh, what I want you to understand is this. Uh, yes, you are a mother. But even as a mother, sometimes you got to lay down the mother's hat uh, and pick up your warrior's hat. Uh, pick up your warrior and don't be began to say what you see, but say what God says and war on behalf of your child. Sometimes you've got to lay down the hat of a husband or of a wife and war on behalf of your spouse. Pick up the hat of your anointing. Pick up the hat of your authority. Pick up the hat of your power and watch God move. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sometimes you need to take on another hat. I know you're an employee. I know you're an entrepreneur, but if you stay on that level, oh, see, this is what I've been talking about, uh, natural and spiritual, uh, oh, we have both. Uh, if you stay on the level of just being uh, a, a, an employee, uh, and if you stay on the level uh, of just being an entrepreneur, uh, then you will miss the level of your authority and your anointing. Uh, you better get this, people of God. Uh, lay aside sometimes, uh, lay off that hat of the natural and take on the hat in the spirit realm. Who are you? You are who God says you are. He's given you power over all the power of the enemy. Stop saying what the enemy is saying about your child. Stop saying it about your marriage. Stop saying what he's saying about your health. Stop saying what he's saying about your finances and begin to take on another hat. Your hat in the spirit, your hat of authority, your hat of power, your hat where you can say what God says and see the manifestation. Come on, some of y'all need to lay down some hats. Lay down some hats as brothers and sisters. Oh, I know it's your brother, but see from the natural realm, all you could see is my brother is a mess. My brother is a wreck. My brother is an alcoholic. My brother got 10 women pregnant all last year. My brother, my brother, my brother. That's all right, but I want you to get this. Lay down the hat of being your brother's sister and pick up your hat of anointing and pick up your hat of authority and now begin, hey Jesus, begin to say what God says. Begin to release what God has given you. Oh, hey, come on, come on. What hat are you wearing? If you hold on to the hat of the world, then you're going to walk by sight and not by faith. But people that walk by faith put on the hat of authority. Walk in the office of the anointing. Walk in the office of power. Hallelujah. Oh, give him praise. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Give him praise this morning. Come on. You got to recognize. Uh, yes, you're still a mother. You're still a father. 
You're still an aunt and uncle. Uh, you are still, come on somebody. Uh, you are still an employee. Uh, you are still an entrepreneur. Uh, you are still, oh yeah, because we have dual citizenship. Uh, you're still a husband. Uh, you're still a wife. Uh, yes, you are. But there comes a time uh, that you got to lay down that hat uh, that brings you pity. Uh, you got to lay down that hat uh, that causes you to be overwhelmed. Oh God, I know I'm talking to somebody this morning. Uh, you got to lay down that hat uh, that causes you to be fearful uh, and you got to pick up your hat of anointing. Uh, you got to pick up that mantle. Uh, you got to say what God says. Uh, you got to walk through your house uh, and declare victory. Uh, you got to open doors and windows uh, and say, Satan, enough is enough. Uh, you got to go now uh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, da da basha. Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah, that was good. That was good because we are spiritual beings, but we're also natural beings. We live in the natural. And so listen, as a natural being, we are mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, come on, employees. We're all of that true enough in the natural, but don't forget who you are in the spirit. And this is what happened with the children of Israel. They believed what the people said about them uh, and they took on uh, that heart and that mindset uh, of what others have said about them. Uh, they forgot that God said, uh, you are my chosen ones. Uh, well, I will be with you always. Uh, I will always cause you to prosper. They forgot what God said uh, because they heard uh, the, what the enemy was saying to them hallelujah oh come on i know i know i know i i, I know i know you're there i know you're there i know you're there mm -hmm. i know you're there i know who i'm talking to this is why we've got to always be dressed for battle yes in the natural we're dressed for battle but also in the spiritual we're dressed for, for battle ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 16 says above all taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked you've got to take the shield of faith now the roman soldiers had two types of shield they had a small shield that was very ornate. It looked good. It was very presentable. They could wear those or carry those in parades and in various celebrations. But those good looking, small petite shields, those shields which were very ornate and people would look at them and be amazed. And those shields were good for what they were good for, to be a show off. But there came a time when they had to go to battle that there was a different shield that they took up, that shield of faith covered them from head to toe. You see, the little ornate might just cover a portion of but when you pick up the shield of faith, it is going to cover you from head to toe. Hallelujah. The shield of faith. Come on. If you didn't take care of it, it would rot. If you didn't take care of it, it would pull apart. It was made of about six layers of animal skin. And if you did not take care of it, if you didn't oil it like you needed to oil it, if you didn't handle it like you needed to handle it, it would dry out. It would tear apart. Oh, hallelujah. So it is in the spirit realm. You have a shield of faith. You've got to oil that thing. Uh, with the anointing of God. Uh, you've got to oil that thing uh, with the word of God. Uh, you've got to oil your shield. Uh, if you don't oil it, it'll fall apart. Uh, some of your faith uh, has been falling apart uh, because you have not oiled your faith. Oh, da -da -ba -sha -ka. oh oil your faith. Oil, 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 oil your faith. If not, it becomes hard. It becomes brittle. It becomes stiff. And it can be torn apart. 
But I declare in the line this morning that there is an oil for your faith. When you oil that thing, it becomes, watch now, uh, when you oil that shield of faith, it is strong, it is long lasting, and it is durable. When your faith begins to wade, when your faith begins to sink, you got to ask why nothing has happened to the word of God. The word of God has not changed. God has not changed. What made your faith change? Who are you listening to? What are you listening to? I want to stir you up this morning that you might move and do the things that God has already assigned and told you to do. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Roman soldiers would soak their shields in water. They soak them. They just let them be drenched with water. Hallelujah. Why is that? Because when they were going to go to battle, if they the, the, the shields were not drenched in water, then whatever the enemy would throw at them, those fiery darts, they would catch their clothing on fire or catch the shield on fire. But when you oil it and when you submerge it and keep that shield in water and you soak that shield in water, you will find out that when fiery darts come, they are quenched. Uh-huh. At the touch, they are quenched. This is why you've got to soak your sword, soak your shield in the word of God. Soak it in the word, the washing of the word of God. You've got to soak that shield of faith. If you don't have the word, you don't have faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Come on, you've got to hear this morning. You've got to soak that shield this morning. Your shield of faith is going to be very important in the days to come. When you hold up that shield, that shield of faith, look, it blocks it blocks, look, it blocks your face. So watch this, enemy can't get those words into your ears. That shield blocks your body. It will block and no man can get to you. You've got to hold up the shield of faith, people of God. Stop taking in what the devil is saying. Who cares? Stop saying, oh, you know, the devil is just busy. He's just been so busy. Yeah, duh, that's what he does. That's why, come on, you've got to take off that natural hat and put on your spiritual hat so that you can do what you have been created to do. You've been created to take authority and to walk all over that devil. You have been created where your enemy will be under your feet. You have been created to have great strategy. He said, let us make man in our image and let's give him authority. You've been created with authority. Jesus said, I raise with all power in my hands and I give you power. Jesus has given us power over all the power of the enemy. You're not gonna recognize his power in the natural because it's a spiritual thing. Watch this, this is my last point. As we talk about power, when the word of God tells us, uh, take the shield of faith, uh, wherewith or with that you shall, uh, watch this, uh, you shall quench uh, all the fiery darts of the wicked. Uh, that word you shall quench, say that, uh, you shall quench uh, is equivalent to the word dunamis. Oh, God, you bad. Uh, so with that shield of faith, uh, you will walk in dunamis power. You will walk in dynamic power. You will walk in dynamite power. You will walk in explosive power with your shield of faith. Your shield of faith is so powerful that you're not just quenching the storms, the, the, the things of the enemy. You're not just quenching the words of the enemy, but you're shooting it back from whence it has come. This word is saying you have dunamis power in your shield of faith. When you exercise it, when you use it, you see your shield is no good as long as it's lying by the side of the road. It's no good when it's hard. It's no good when it's falling apart. This is why you got to oil that thing. 
oil that thing uh, with the anointing of God. Uh, and when you oil it, uh, you'll see the power, dunamis power, dynamite power, explosive power to come forth in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. We are to live a faith-filled life this morning and we are to use our shield of faith that will cover our ears our shield of faith that helps us remember that the word of god says we have the ear of the learner which is the ear that is in tune to what god is saying our ears are in touch with heaven we're in tune with heaven come on listen because we are in the natural does not mean we have to fall for everything in the natural I know we gotta eat. <laughs> I know we gotta live. I know we gotta work. I know things happen to us in the natural, but I want you to know you are a spiritual being and don't lose sight of who you are. Don't lose sight of who you are and don't lose sight of whose you are. Oh, karabashata, all the blessings of the Lord are here and they are with you. He's already given you all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. <clears throat> you are heavenly seated. You're seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. And I want you to exercise your faith this morning. Exercise your faith this morning. We cancel every assignment of the enemy every assignment that has come even to distract the people of God, every assignment of confusion, every assignment of lack, we command now that every ear be closed to all ungodly counsel, all ungodly words, all negativity spewing out of the mouth of the enemy. Let the ears be closed now. Let the ear of the learned be open to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. And we release it this morning. I release, come on, that anointing that as you carry that shield, that there is dunamis power being exercised by you. Korabashata, power, power. Start the business, continue the business, continue to live, buy your home, maintain your finances. You have that kind of power and recognize when the enemy comes in to distract you, to confuse you. I hear people saying that now. I'm just, I'm so confused. I, you know, I thought I was supposed to do, but now I just don't know. That confusion is gone. We broke it this morning. We, we understand where confusion comes from and that is not of God. So I bless you with peace this morning. I bless you with the joy of the Lord that is your strength. You have been seated in heavenly places. Yes, you're here in the natural. We're in the world, but not of the world. I am of the, a spiritual being in heavenly places and I execute and exercise from the heavenly realm. Oh, give God praise this morning. I bless you. I bless you. Come on, your faith. Come on, come on, come on. This is all about your faith. Oil that shield, soak that shield. Oh God, you're so good. Come on, I cover each of you under the blood of Jesus. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, bow your heads and close your eyes right now. And I want you to repeat after me because see, these are promises of the saved. These are promises of those that are of the just. Some people think that being saved is a bunch of rituals. It's not a bunch of rituals. Now that, that's not salvation. You don't have to turn towards the East and pray seven times a day. You don't have to stand on the corner and pass out a track. That does not get you saved. By grace are you saved through faith not of your works, lest any man can boast. So see, we don't have bragging rights about our salvation. It's all because of what Jesus did on the cross. And it's as simple as that. And if you receive him as Lord and Savior, you're entitled to the things of God. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe that Jesus died. I believe that he was buried. And I believe that he resurrected from the dead. And I receive him into my heart. 
as my Lord and my Savior. And because of that, I am saved. Hallelujah. Give him praise. You prayed that prayer. You are saved. Now what you need to do is get into a church. We understand we haven't gone back just yet, but we're going back soon. Uh, so, But you can still join. You can still come under our covering. There should be a link somewhere that lets you know how to become a member of Mountains Hope Community Worship Center. This is a wonderful ministry. It is a powerful ministry. It's a ministry who loves the Lord. We're not gift seekers. We're God seekers. We seek the face of our God. And so we just want you to be blessed. It's a wonderful connection to be a part of Mountains Hope. I bless you all. If you prayed that prayer for the rest of you, receive the open ear from the Lord and receive walking in your spiritual place in heavenly places. I want you to receive that you can change your hats. As a mother, as a father, brother, sister, whomever, you might say some things that don't align itself with the word of God. So I want you to remove that hat. And I want you to put on your spiritual hat. I want you to put on your hat of authority, your hat of power, your hat that shall see results and execute who you are in the heavenly realm. I give God glory. I give him honor. This is a powerful word because your faith is going to take you to that next place. Your faith is increasing in your life. Your faith is bringing you to that expected end. Your faith is giving life to your hope and your faith is giving feet to that which you believe. I bless you. I give God glory for you. Hallelujah. I give you now into the hands of Pastor Michelle as she comes, as we prepare for our tithing, our offering, our elder Sam, either one can come as we prepare to receive our tithing and our, listen, you got to sow seed now. Part of, listen, take off the hat of doubt when it comes to sowing seed and put on that hat of faith. Lord, I believe that when I sow seed, more seed is my portion. I sow seed with an expectation of more seed. When I pay my tithing, I expect God to rebuke the devourer for my sake. I have an expectation. Do you have an expectation in the word? I give God glory for you. Pastor Michelle is here. Let's receive her as she comes and receives our tithing and offering. God bless you, Pastor Michelle. God bless you. God bless you, Apostle. Amen. Amen. Listen, I so see with an expectation as well. <laughs> I so see uh, with a joyful heart as well. I, I so see because it says in the word uh, that we are to sow. And you know, you give of your talent and of your treasure and of your time to those things that mean something to you. Uh, sowing seed is also a way that we show uh, that we believe that we stand in faith and believe. So in the morning, sow thy seed. And in the evening, with not uh, withhold not your hand, for you do not know which one shall prosper, either this one or that one, or the both alike will be good. And I just believe that every seed I sow, something, something I'm going to reap a harvest from every seed I sow. If not tomorrow, next harvest season, it is coming. Amen. I just believe God. So with your giving devices ready, out and ready to go, praise God. Uh, you can uh, sow your seed via Cash App at MHCWC. That's dollar sign MHCWC. Or you can also sow by PayPal by going to our website, mhcwc.org, and the PayPal button is in the top right-hand corner. Or if you have the PayPal app on your phone, uh, just mhcwc, and go ahead and sow your seed. Be a blessing and to the work of the Lord that we do at Mount Hope Community Worship Center, um, which is, it's located in Tracy, but it's a, it's a global work. It's an international work. Uh, glory be to God. So let us pray. Father God, I thank you and I bless you. I thank you for every giver. 
I bless you for every generous heart. I thank you for every person who is represented on today, Lord God. I pray that you would uh, cause us to give out of joy and give uh, out of gladness. I thank you that you bless us every time we give. I thank you that you give us seed to sow and we sow it with joy. Bless your people in the name of Jesus. I thank you for giving back to us as your word has promised. Press down, shake it together and run it over. Shall men give unto our bosom. I thank you for it in Jesus name. And I bless you. I glorify you. All right. All right. Um, we just have a few announcements, really not a lot of announcements this morning. Um, one thing I really, and I know Apostle will probably be back to, uh, to, to thank you as well, but I really want to thank you all who came by to uh, see our Chief Elder Troy on his birthday, on his 90th birthday, birthday this past Tuesday. Um, it did his heart so good. There was just joy in his eyes. He was smiling and laughing. Couldn't always get to see his smile because of the mask. But um, at one point, his mask came off and I got to see that beautiful smile. Uh, and he was blessed uh, to for us to have been there, to come by and see him, sit outside, uh, catch a little air and get to talk to some people. So thank you so much for everyone who who came by, who sent a gift, who uh, sowed a seed, gave a birthday blessing, sent a phone call, a text message, any way that you uplifted our elder Troy on his 90th birthday. Uh, thank you from my, my heart. He's been my chief elder Troy for a long time. I know Apostle will be on soon to thank you as well. Um, and then our only other announcement is our return to in-person uh, worship service survey. And I've just, let's see, I've just put the link in the thread for anyone who has had a problem finding it. Uh, you'll see the link is right there. You can click the link. It'll take you to our website where you can fill out the survey. If you're having a difficult time filling out the survey online and need some assistance, please feel free uh, to contact our church line by text or by phone or call us in 209-831-0030 and someone will contact you uh, to assist you in completing that survey. We want to hear from everyone. And we're about halfway there. Uh, when we look at the size of our church body, we're about halfway there in getting our responses. Um, and so we are eagerly awaiting to, to hear from more of you so that we can make the proper preparation uh, for returning to service um, in whichever capacity you will be returning. If you're going to continue online, that's great. We want to know that you, continue, you plan to continue uh, attending online and not coming into the building. Uh, if you plan to come to the building, we want to know that as well. This helps us um, determine the best way to um, prepare for it, to, to use our resources and to make sure that we are able to protect, uh, protect everyone, uh, social distance and PPE and all of those things. All right. We're going to need volunteers. Even as we begin to open up, we're going to need different types of volunteers. So in the coming a uh, week or so, we'll even put out another survey to see or we'll start to see how else uh, can we, can you help us as we return? We're going to need people to take temperatures and help distribute PPE and all of those types of things. We're going to need those really soon. So we'll be asking for your assistance um, for your volunteerism coming in the coming weeks. And that is it. Uh, we do have our regular services, our 9 a.m. Uh, Zoom call, Zoom for our youth on Sunday morning and um, our worship service and then our weekly prayer Monday through Thursday and on Tuesday afternoon. We got that cleared up this week and thank you all for helping me with that. Uh, and then our men's fellowship on Saturdays. And that is it. I'm going to turn it back over to our apostle. And you're still muted, apostle. God bless you, Pastor Michelle. Thank you so much. Yes, we are going to be in need of so many things. I Listen, we have, uh, have an opportunity to partner with one of the ministries in Tracy. And so if you can volunteer, if you'd like to be a part of the food, the meal distribution program, 
please, I want you to let us know. You can either contact the church line. You could send a text or send a message. Let us know and someone will be contacting you. We have an opportunity to partner with one of the ministries in Tracy and we get fresh food. And so we'll pick it up on Thursdays and distribute it on Thursdays. And so we're going to need people to help. And so we want you to do that. Also, something that's been a burden on my heart is someone to help with prison ministry. So if you are, would like to help us with prison ministry, and that is to send correspondence and out to the various ones, you're not gonna use your address. You're not going to use your name. It will be the ministry name. The address will be the address of the ministry. You're not gonna give out your personal information, but we need to send a word to encourage those who are incarcerated, that they might know who Jesus is and the power of his might. And as Pastor Michelle said, there's so much more to really know. Don't you know there's transforming power in the blood of Jesus? So there's so much help that we're going to need. And so just volunteer, whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. You weren't made to be a pew member, a bench member right now, a couch member or a couch potato. You're made to work. God created you unto workmanship. And so there's a work that needs to be done. And as she has said, I was coming back and I'm so grateful for you, Pastor. Listen, my husband, if you all understood the state that he was in when I brought him home from this facility that was a five-star facility that was to take excellent care of him, if you could have seen the demise of my husband, I refuse to believe what the doctor said. One doctor even said, that's his new uh, baseline. And I said, no, it's not. Meaning this is his new, uh, his new norm. No, it's not. And so I brought him home and my, let me tell you, the power of God has just really helped my husband and brought him back to life. I mean, literally we're looking at a miracle. We're, I saw the transformation and those who saw him understand what this transformation was like. And so for you to come and to celebrate, you brought even more life to him. We didn't get a chance to open gifts until yesterday. And so all, all of you, I believe he sent videos. Some of you sent him cash apps. You were unable to come, but you sent a love offering or sent a shout out and I read it to him. I sent it to him. I, I showed him uh, and he sent you videos. And so he is so grateful. The elder Troy you see now is closer to the elder Troy that he's supposed to be. And I believe God for a complete work in his life. I, if you only knew, if you only, you don't know because I don't let, I don't tell you everything, but you've got to know the power of faith. We walk this thing out and God did it. So I give God glory. I also want you to know many of you were on the line and you heard this, my dear friend, and she's been on the line and she taught for us, uh, Dr. Brenda Wright. She was also the owner of the college where I attended PCIE. She was also my personal teacher, my personal instructor, a woman of great wisdom. She walked with Catherine Kuhlman. She served under Catherine Kuhlman's ministry. Uh, just a wonderful, wonderful, uh, beautiful, anointed, a wise woman of God. And she's gone home to be with the Lord. I tell you, she dropped some seeds here and every seed that has been sown is going to sprout up and bring forth a tremendous harvest. I'm walking in that. I thank the Lord for her life, for her time. I really thank the Lord for my dear friend and for allowing me to connect with her and to know her. And uh, I'm going to miss her. So you all pray for me. I'm really going to miss her. And so I bless you all. We connected regularly. She would send me uh, this uh, something from her daughter on a daily basis. And I said, she needs to put that into a journal. It's a phenomenal work that she has done, but I'm a part, and this is what I want you to get. The word of God tells us, Apostle Paul says that, you know, when he has done all that he could do, he's, he, when he's finished his journey, when he's completed his work, and she, I was a part of her work. I want you to know, even you that are listening, you are part of my work. You are part of my work. Bishop, 
I've been a part of her work. And what I have received, I am imparting unto you. And it gives me great pleasure. Don't take lightly the word of the Lord. Don't take lightly your covering. Don't take lightly these connections. They're important. There's such an impartation that comes when I release as I release on the line. So I bless each and every one of you today. I give God glory for you. Let us pray. Thank you again, Pastor Michelle, Deacon Dell behind the scenes, and then Elder Sam for the wonderful worship on this morning. Father, in Jesus' name, as we leave this line, we don't leave your presence. We thank you, Lord, as we believe you for miracles. We stand in agreement. I have not seen and ear has not heard. Neither is in it into the heart of man the things that you have prepared for those that love you. We declare we love you this morning. We carry your glory, your authority, and your power. And we will walk by faith and not by sight. And we give you all glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I love you. I will see you Wednesday night live. God bless.